Stacey Landberg, speech language pathologist. Hi, I'm Kelly Bavaro, also a speech language pathologist. We're watching a little home visit today. Um, this is Angie. She's a speech language pathologist as well. And we're watching her in a home visit with a family that we have already seen one video from if you've tuned into the channel before. Um, so this is another home visit where she arrives in the morning and kind of jumps into the morning routines with mom and two siblings, two daughters. Um, and I think she's working with both of them separately, right? For speech therapy, right, Stacey? She used to work with the older child, but she doesn't anymore. She just works with the little one now. And okay. yeah. And like, I think I mentioned this in the other video that if you haven't seen it, you can go back and look for this one. Um, but yeah, Angie, the SLP was using a direct therapy, bring in a toy bag model with the older one and just really dove into the coaching format um, with little Angie, the child in this video. So we'll get to see a couple different routines and it's a short clip. So we'll watch the whole thing through. Uh, if you guys like it or have other observations or feedback for us, please do um, leave us a comment below and let us know what you're seeing. She wants to put the water on first. Angie, oh, what do you need, Angie? Angie, <laughs> toothpaste. She said, okay, some mama on. There you go. Now we brush our teeth. Brush, she brush, was, brush. Her. Yeah. She likes to look at herself when she's brushing. Okay. Here. <laughs> brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. How about you, Victoria? Brush. Brush. your brush? Here. Oh, you're brushing your tongue. You brush your teeth. Oh, yes, in the back. Up and down. Up and down. A ver. Up and down. There, there we go. go. You're doing great. Up, up. Good job, Ange. All by yourself. Look, pull your pants up. up. <laughs> oh, stop. You help? Help, mommy. There you go. There you go. That's a cute little outfit. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Oh, we need the shoes. 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 Wow. Oh, those are dirty. Dirty. Ew. Does she know where to put her dirty clothes? Uh, no, it's no, no, she doesn't. Okay. Okay, and she, and Come on in. <laughs> She's like, come on, mommy. So let's see what she can do by herself. Here she can. All right. So Kelly, I know that was a quick clip. And I just started making a few notes, and I'm curious what you saw first, just in terms of strengths and like anyone's strengths, mom, little Angie. Angie, the SLP, or just of this visit, anything stood out to you? I think it's really great that she just jumps into their, to their day with them. Um, I'm not sure if they discussed what was going on first. I think we'll kind of get to that, but just that she's a part of their, of their morning and, you know, those routines of brushing teeth, putting shoes on, you know, the family, you know, recognizes Angie's role in helping them with those and just how important it is to jump in on those. And mom's using a bunch of good strategies during it. Um, it's a nice, a nice triad, a nice joint interaction, happy. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. The mood is really sweet. I liked how exactly what you said. Well, first of all, I really like seeing other routines outside of play. So I'm always like, woohoo, we're in toothbrushing, we're in dressing. Yeah. She's on. And, um, yeah, I just, there's so many opportunities and those things repeat. So um, I loved seeing those contexts and knowing that Angie, the SLP is just working so hard to push herself out of that comfort zone to not bring in a toy bag and like sit down and play. And she does it so awesome. And this mom clearly knows like, that's what this time is for. It's not for therapy. It's for supporting her child in the context of everyday moments. I love that. Yeah. I also liked how mom just already knew so many strategies. So she asked her a question yeah. at the beginning with like toothbrush and then little Angie goes to, and she goes toothbrush. Like she just like, you know, yeah. I love seeing parents use those intervention strategies. Yeah. Yeah. So naturally too. I mean, maybe she's worked on it for a while, but yeah, just right away. She knew what to do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's talk a little bit about like the coaching strategies that we did see, um, first, like, what did you see for coaching strategies by Angie, the SLP? Definitely joined interaction. Um, there was a, 
a moment of guided practice too. She had said, let's see what Angie can do on her own with putting her shoes on. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah. Uh, what else? Well, I definitely saw the same. A lot of joint interaction. Angie was just like kind of part of the routine and encouraging mom by modeling that language. So if mom said something, then Angie kind of like repeated it or provided another model. Um, yeah, I heard that opportunity for guided practice there with the shoes. And I think that um, I heard some feedback too. Um, you know, I, I can't remember now if it was general or specific feedback where she said about something that little Angie did. Um, so I know she's able to give that like strengths-based feedback on how something's going. I think there was a lot of opportunities for other coaching strategies also, but in the context of such a busy visit with siblings and grandmas there and they're rushing, I feel like these are good visits to watch. Not because Angie, the SLP did anything wrong, but it just gets to be so busy when you're right there in the mix of it, that when you go back and watch later, you can see something like, oh, I could have done what? What do you think she could have like also done to coach a little bit more, or use more coaching strategies in those awesome routines? I think in the beginning, setting the stage a little bit more, because I, I do love those visits where you feel like you're part of the family and you jump into all of these routines and you're just like in the rhythm of their life. You know, it's so valuable to know what that feels like and to be a part of it. But um, like you said, there are these moments, these opportunities for other strategies to come in. So I think starting out by you know, like, what are we working on today? What, what would you like to, to see today? Um, we're going to jump into to toothbrushing, but um, what's our goal in this? Is there a strategy that mom wants to practice? Is there something that we've been working with on Angie? They were doing the um, up and down, which I noticed up came in with the other routine too. Is it you know, receptively under, is it understanding up? Is it repeating up? Just having some more direction going into it might be nice. Um, mom had kind of said some, like she was talking to Angie too, during their routine, like, oh, Angie loves seeing herself in the mirror, you know? So I'm thinking, oh, that's an opportunity to talk about the stool coming up. I mean, there's so many micro routines in there that I imagine for Angie, she's thinking like, okay, we got like looking in the mirror, turning the water on, mom gave me this feedback. And so, yeah, trying to, trying to zero in and, and like take a beat from the beginning would be helpful, I think. Definitely. And I feel like that's actually one of the harder things to do as coaches is to observe with intention and also even telling mom, what am I going to ask you, mom, what am I going to see here? And it's letting the caregiver know okay, I'm actually going to watch and, and you tell me what you want to show me. Um, and then I can ask you like, how do you think that went? Or what would you like to see Angie be able to do? Or, you know, but it gives mom the space to be intentional about, um, mom can say like, you're going to see her, um, this is what we've been working on, or you're going to see, um, when I model the words, she seems to understand better what that means now, or I don't really know what you're going to see. Can you help me? And then there's like problem solving happening. Um, but yeah, I really feel like that could have been such a cool moment. Or even if Angie, because mom is doing so much modeling of language, I even feel like some strategic choices there, like what words do you want to prioritize in this context? Or, oh, you were doing a lot of up and down before. I know you're doing it again here with the dressing. How do you think that's going? Where else might we practice it? Like all of that really rich problem solving and dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even if it is going to be that, that observing with a purpose, um, we want to make sure that we can reflect afterward or problem solve you know, surrounding that routine at some point. So no matter what we have to, we have to talk about, you know, what we're working on, like you said, what are we going to see here um, to set the stage for any other, for any other strategies or, or coaching strategies to take place. Yeah. Right. Right. And also since Angie 
is skilled at giving that strengths-based feedback, I really wanted her to give more of that to mom. Like I was like, oh my gosh, mom's doing so much. Let's hear like, let's hear that like validation for mom. Like, I love that you're modeling this. That was great when you gave her an opportunity to respond vocally. And yeah, I just, I feel like she's got the tools and she has the coaching strategies. We just need to find the moments like where they're going to make an impact. And I think there was a few moments in this one. Um, what other thoughts did you have about it or what, what else did you observe? Um, something else I noticed kind of goes off the same theme as what we were saying within the toothbrushing routine. There's a lot going on in that. We saw that in the, in the shoe routine also, um, mom had asked Angie, the child, uh, where her shoes were pretty quickly. Mom picked up the shoes. So she said something like, Oh, Angie, where's your shoes? And then picked them up. So and then they kind of jumped right into let's let's see how Angie puts them on, which is awesome. Um, but I think slowing it down a little bit so that maybe we can see if Angie looks towards the shoes on her own. So we're gauging what she's understanding, maybe giving her a chance to imitate. Um, and it would be it would be great to bring in another coaching strategy, you know, so maybe asking mom. What might be a way that we can see how Angie's doing in understanding the vocabulary in this routine that, you know, you've been using and, you know, you can, you can come off that with a, like, you've been doing such a great job modeling and, you know, um, but what might be a way that we can kind of gauge Andy's understanding of these words and seeing what mom comes up with. Um, maybe it would be waiting a little bit longer um, or asking, you know, how can we, how can we set Angie up for success in this routine so that she can show off her skills a little more, kind of take more time to set the stage as I call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, instead of just diving right in and then trying to dial it back later. Yeah, definitely. Well, and I think there was a few moments um, all throughout this home visit, like in this clip and the one we showed before and throughout where Angie, the SLP is looking for some information about little Angie's comprehension. So she says there, like, does she know right. where to put her dirty clothes? Like she's trying to find out yeah, that yeah. information, like using that information sharing coaching strategy. And then like, again, where mom says that thing about where's your shoes. And then she quickly helps her. It's like, you know, we're also being using our like clinical mind of like, can I take some data here? Can I figure out what the child knows? Like, what could I give them credit for? How much do they understand? Um, but yeah, when you're in that like rush and that hurry, it's like that you lose that opportunity or there's a missed opportunity to like slow it down and ask mom, even like, what do you think she understands in this context? Like if you were to give her a direction, would she, what might she understand? Do you want to try, um, asking her? where her shoes are or, um, yeah, like some, I like the kind of line of thinking where you're going, because I think that those moments just get rushed so quick, especially like this family is a busy morning. Um, I love the idea of taking this clip back to mom and being like, look, let's watch this. Yeah. Together, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, doing that video model, you could spend a whole session alone. I think just going through the toothbrushing routine, watching the video together, pausing it, having mom reflect. Absolutely. Yeah. And also like we were saying, you know, that upward, that up and down came in, in both routines. So maybe before going, and this is all in retrospect, right? Like sometimes you think of these things after the fact. So like we're sitting here watching the video, we weren't in the moment like Angie, but it occurred to me that up and down was was being used in the toothbrushing routine. So then before transitioning over like, oh, Angie was doing so great understanding up and down. I know we're about to put pants on. How do you think we can incorporate that into, into this routine and seeing like maybe mom can catch up, uh, catch us up on how she's been doing with understanding or imitating that word over the last week. And we can build from there. Right. And I think the reason that we keep kind of going back to this idea of like, if we set it up with mom, like in the beginning, we'd, we'd know what the priority was because it felt very much throughout this whole visit that the priority was about modeling language and mom's mm -hmm. just doing a ton of that. And Angie, that LP is also just modeling, 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 right? Like toothbrush on, up, down, back in the back, your turn on, off, like so much language modeling, which is great. If we know that's 
the target, especially going into the visit, like, what do you want to work on today? What strategies do you want to do? But since we didn't have that information, we saw what felt like maybe for us missed opportunities because we didn't hear them set it up that way. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. maybe that was decided before the visit, right? Like sometimes I'll check in with a parent and just say, I want you to start thinking about, you know, what you want to prioritize this week so we can make the most of our time. Um, Mm -hmm. checking in and being like, what do you, what would you like to see Angie be able to do here? And maybe it has nothing to do with pulling, like putting her shoes on. Maybe it has to do with, um, you know, like saying something or, or showing something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like even with Angie working on putting her shoes on, I mean, this is good for motor, but also, you know, is she, is she joint referencing during that? Um, is she vocalizing during it? There's, there's so many different things we can work on within these, these just incidental moments, these short moments, you know, that seem so insignificant on the outside, but I mean, yeah, the possibilities are endless in these. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I definitely feel like this mom knows that the contacts, like the play or the toothbrushing or the shoes, like it's like all of those are valuable learning opportunities. She's not expecting mm-hmm. Angie to come in and be like, oh, let me hurry up and get her ready so she can work with you. It's like, no, this right. is awesome. I know. I love that. Uh-huh. All right. So Kelly, um, reflection question for our listeners and for us. Um, I feel like a good reflection question and it could be about reflection. Um, how am I tying in reflection into my really busy sessions where there's multiple kids running around and a lot of activity or routines to get done. You know, we work with really busy families who have, they got stuff to do, you know, and we're there and we'll help, we're helping, but are we making time for reflection? And if so, how can we improve it in those really busy sessions? Like how can we carve out the time or get it, get it in there, you know, even if it feels uncomfortable in the beginning, getting comfortable with like getting it in there. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And that idea of reflection prior to action, right? Like prior Mm, setting up. So how did it go and what are we going to see and what should we try? And then how did that feel? Right. So it's like starting and bookending with reflection and even moments in between. How is this going? Is this what you wanted to get to today? Like all of that language Mm -hmm. and just like recognizing it's really hard because the most, the two most, you know, evidence-based adult learning principles and strategies are reflection and action. So Angie's got the action down. She's like, she (laughs) the the book on how to get in and do it. Right. And we Mm -hmm. just like, we just can't forget that it's like a dance and they have to like work together. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Kelly. I love that you said the dance, finding the dance. I feel like that. I remember finding the dance. Sorry, this is kind of tangential, but um, that's always been one of my go-tos in supervising is just like finding the dance with your client. There's this push and pull as you figure each other out and gain trust and rapport and can, can then, you know, eventually work on whatever these targets are through that connection that forms, but it's this finding the dance. But like you just said, as we become coaches and we use routines based, we're finding the dance with the parent or the caregiver and the caregivers are now, you know, finding the dance with their children, but also telling us about the dance that they have with their children. There's all these dances going on and we're all finding them together. You have to find the dance. And that's when, that's where the magic can happen, right? Definitely. I love it. (laughs) That's going to be the title of this video, Kelly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right you guys if okay. you like it uh tell us let us know what you like what you saw and uh we'll be back thank you bye thank you <laughs>